Hello, and welcome to Your Sparkly Brand, the podcast for badass, game-changing business owners who aren't afraid to sparkle and stand out. Here, we're all about fighting the status quo in marketing and branding so that you can reach more people and make more money. Coaches, creatives, and thought leaders, here you'll discover how to become magnetic AF so that you can build and scale a sparkly empire. I'm Megan Gersh, your brand designer and web designer, and I'm here with my co-host, the magnetic messaging queen, Lauren Tassie. Hey, Lauren, how are you? Hi, Megan. I'm great. How are you? You. Good. Well, I'm so excited to introduce you to our guest today. We have another Lauren. Story of my life, right? Everybody's a Lauren. Lauren Littlewood. She is a former healthcare worker turned rebellious entrepreneur. She's a copywriter and marketing strategist for rebel brands and radical change makers. And she has a YouTube channel where she shows entrepreneurs how to harness a rebel mindset for life and for business. Welcome to your sparkly brand, Lauren. Hey, how are you? <laughs> awesome. So glad to have you here. Damn, so excited to be here. Awesome. Okay. So before we jump into your story. We like to start each episode with our sparkly moment of the week. It's like a little win or a little celebration, something that makes you feel sparkly. So Meg, what was your sparkly moment? So this week I'm actually taking off to Richmond, Virginia. I'm actually going to meet some mastermind folks that I've been chatting with for almost a year and I get to meet them in person this coming week. And so I'm just pretty excited about that. I've been like prepping for it and getting ready for that trip. So yeah, it's making me feel a little sparkly. Awesome. What about you? So I've been talking to a lot of clients, like, well, not necessarily clients, but ideal clients, prospective clients. I've really been doing a lot of calls over the past couple of weeks. And it's like, even though at times it can feel frustrating because it's like, okay, well, that's not a deal or it's not a deal yet. Just like realizing that I, I even just like talking to people, even if they're not buying from me yet. So that, that feels good. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. And you never know, you never know who is like, you know, prospects can come out of nowhere. It's a long game for sure. For sure. And Lauren, do you have one that you want to share? I do. I had a little change in my living situation this this past weekend and now I have this big beautiful office and it's so nice to like have a huge designated space for just like I have a giant bookcase with all of my books and my beautiful desk and a reading chair and it's just so exciting <laughs> after years of working in a very small space it's just fantastic so that's my big sparkly moment oh congratulations thanks all right so let's get into it Lauren why don't you start by telling us a little bit about your journey yeah so working in healthcare I always wanted to help people and make a difference in the world. I always felt like that was like my mission in life. And my dad was a physical therapist assistant and I saw how he changed so many people's lives. And so I'm like, okay, yeah, let me go into that. So I went into physical therapy and in working there in physical therapy, I realized that the industry is so just not set up for helping people and for making like the world a better place. And so my highly sensitive self just couldn't handle watching all of this stuff happen to people and patients that I loved. And so I got out of that industry. I'm like, okay, I have to find something else. I have to find something, you know, that will make a difference. And then on a personal note, I also wanted to find something that I had like autonomy over my own life. I always felt like in healthcare, I had to ask permission. There were always days blocked off. Oh, nope, you can't have a holiday during this time period. You know, we had blackout dates like Disney. And I wanted to be able to take time off with my son. I'm a single parent. And if he was sick one day, like I couldn't just like bring a sick kid to a nursing home. You know what I mean? So I'm like, I wanted to have autonomy over my life. And so I started searching about things that I could do from home. And I had always wanted to be a writer. And so I ended up finding copywriting. And I'm like, hey, I have all this background in healthcare, I had in yoga. I was a yoga instructor for a while. I was a holistic health coach for a while. So I'm like, ah, I am like built for this health and wellness copywriter. So that's when I started copywriting in health and wellness. And that's how I got here. I love that. And so I know that you talk a bunch about like, rebel marketing. So like, what does that mean in terms of like, what do you mean by rebel marketing? How do you identify like a rebel brand? Well, when I was working in health and wellness copywriting, I started working with these brands that were doing things differently, who wanted to improve their, their languaging, like say, take out the diet culture in their supplement brand, or I worked with a contraceptive brand that wanted to improve gender inclusivity and discuss more about like trans rights and people with uterus or, you know, who menstruate of all genders. And, and that was just like so impactful to me. And I remember feeling just like, oh my God, this is making the difference. And so then I was looking something up. I was just like listening to something and it talked about what a rebel is. And a rebel is defined as somebody who rises in resistance against a norm or established rule. And then I realized these brands that I had worked with, that's exactly what they were doing. They were resisting 
shifting diet culture. They were improving or like avoiding excluding people in their messaging. And they're like, that's what I want to do. That's what, that's it. That's, that's the, the thing that wasn't quite fitting was the rebel part. And so that's when I started looking for companies that were value aligned instead of honing down into that specific niche of health and wellness. I threw that out the window and I'm like, no, I'm finding value aligned companies that want to change the status quo and want to make the world a better place. So anyone who aligns with that. I love that. So like, let's say this is resonating. Like, how do we do this? Maybe we're not, you know, totally inclusive yet. Or, or, you know, do you have like a, a process, some tips you can give us? How do we become a, a rebel brand? Yeah, I think it starts first inside. It starts with personal values. So if you have an entrepreneur who has a wellness brand, for example, who wants to take out that diet culture, they would first search internally. I feel like starting with the owners, starting with the actual people in the company, doing that internal work and identifying where that may be seeping into your brain, because we do a lot of things that are completely absent-minded and and so doing that internal work to address the diet culture within yourself and then working at changing your branding and your messaging and then evolving that so I say work from the inside out I find it really interesting too because like I feel like we probably speak to a similar type of person and one of the things that I've heard from people so much is like they have trouble finding like a mentor or people that they can work with that they really align with in that way a lot of the folks that I have talked to have said like been afraid to kind of like really step into like who I truly am because there's all of this noise and all of this other chatter around like you have to fit into this boring beige box right like you have to do this is the way that you have to do business and so I think it's really valuable what you're doing and like this idea of like a rebellious brand or re rebellious mindset is so powerful because it kind of goes against everything else that is out there right which helps you stand out and become more of a unique brand, right? So you stand out in your authentic self and you attract people who align with your authentic self and therefore they become your biggest fans and ideal customers. Absolutely. It sounds like what we say every episode. So let's talk a little bit about shame and marketing. So what does that look like and how does it show up? I think shame and marketing is like you were talking about a few podcast episodes ago about the bro marketing. And it just is so rooted in making customers feel fear and shitty about themselves or their circumstances. I saw a commercial recently. It was for a diet pill, diet or diet pill. I don't know. And it was talking about losing weight. Like, oh, you can go on the vacation. I'm like, so this person is now feeling like garbage about themselves and that, and then you're telling them that they cannot live their life to the fullest because of their size. And that was like, okay, that is shame marketing to me, a hundred percent where the person, like you're making people feel like they can't express themselves. They can't feel sexy. They can't go on vacation. They can't be in a bathing suit just because of this thing that literally does not matter. And, you know, versus companies that would go on the opposite side, right? And so say you have a nutrition coach and they're then talking about healing your relationship with your food. They're not talking about about weight loss. There's no fat phobia in it. They're talking about healing the relationship with food or recovering from diet culture mentality and actually like creating balance and creating a wholehearted nutritional abundant life and not restricting you. They're not putting you in that box. And I think with the shame-based marketing, they like to put people and make people feel as small as possible and manipulate into buying. It's very narcissistic and then changing it to being more value aligned and more giving and value based, I think is going to make all the difference in the world. I think, you know, we're both copywriters. We come from the same school of copywriting. And I think that like, I'm, you get it too, when you're talking to clients, it's just people, I think copywriters have gotten a bad rap for so long because it's a technique that does sell, right? It moves products. You can make people feel bad, make them feel like they have, you know, scarcity, like their life is lacking without this one thing that'll solve all their problems. But there's other ways to sell too. Too. And that's, that's, you know, something I talk about every day. And it's just, you know, I'm, we need everyone out there to spread this message that like shame is not the only motivator when it comes to getting people to buy something. Yeah. And talking to their true pain points, you know, understanding your audience, because I feel like a lot of these companies, they don't actually spend 
the time to understand their audience and what their audience is really suffering from. Speaking to that and using empathy to connect with them in an authentic way versus using shame and narcissistic manipulation tactics. Yeah, it's the reason all those like old sales letters feel so terrible to us today because they don't resonate anymore. It's just like, it, it's it's like, like a fax machine or something in terms of technology. Yes, I cannot handle some of those old, the old copy. It just is so cringy. And you know, they say, learn the rules like a pro so you can break them like an artist. And I'm like trying to learn all the rules. I'm like, I can't, it hurts. So you mentioned MB as like, obviously a great way to sort of like an anti shame tactic. Is there anything else that we can, you know, utilize to work against bias and embrace inclusivity in our marketing? Other than working internally on understanding these things because you know things like anti-racism and fat phobia and gender inclusivity it's so ingrained in our culture to not be these things that it takes a lot of work to really understand it for yourself once you fully understand it and hopefully you can have a team that can fully understand it then you can start translating it outwards and I think also having a, a clear idea of what your brand is and who your brand is I like to ask my clients if your brand was a person, what would they be like? And really get into the nitty gritty of like what this imaginary person cares about. What are their values? What are their likes and dislikes? How do they speak? You know, are they like that really cool aunt that cusses and breath smells like wine? Like, you know, what are, what are they like? And that gives, I think, the client a little bit of a clearer picture of who their brand is. And then aligning that with their customer, understanding your audience, having a clear idea of what is truly valuable to them, what they truly need, and align each. That makes sense. Totally. Any other tips that you can give our listeners who want to really challenge that status quo in their branding and in their marketing, but they might be feeling a little bit afraid to stand out, or they might be feeling that hesitation and that resistance? Yes. I think everybody who is an entrepreneur, has a business, needs to look at what your big why is. Because on the surface, for example, like take me for example, on the surface, I'm like, yeah, I want the freedom. I want the money. I want, you know, the flexibility. I want to be able to like do copy in Italy while I'm on vacation if I want to. I want all this freedom, right? But what's the deeper why? The deeper why is because I want to eradicate diet culture in copy. I want to be a thought leader when it comes to to breaking the norms in marketing because I myself have been a victim of shame-based marketing that got in my head and fucked me up for a really long time. I had an eating disorder for a really long time. And, you know, I want to change that. And that's my deeper why. And so understanding what your deeper why is helps you to have that extra oomph. Like, no, this is what I'm made for. This is what I stand for. And helps you deal with those trolls that like to, you know, bully you online and things like that and keeps you grounded and rooted in your purpose. What are, if you don't mind sharing, like, and I know this question is sort of hard to like pull out, out of the top of your head, but like, are there some brands, some people, some thought leaders, like who out there is like doing an awesome job at this rebellious marketing? Tori Dunlap, I think is a great example. She has the Financial Feminist Podcast, her company, her first 100K and stuff like that. And I just freaking adore her. I love how honest and relatable she is. I love of how she speaks on systems of oppression and she speaks on this like bro industry of finance and how exclusive it is for just like essentially your you know white man and leaves out a lot of people who have other obstacles and that type of branding or like Savage X Fenty Rihanna's brand. She's like took a industry that essentially had everybody as a thin white woman. And she's like, nah, lingerie is for everybody. And everybody's gonna be shown everybody wears lingerie, you know, it should be shown on all of the bodies that it will be purchased for, you know, so those brands right there always give me like a little bit of inspiration and a little bit of like, fuck yeah, because they're doing the work to like take things down. And like Rihanna, for example, she freaking completely changed the lingerie 
lingerie industry with her line. And now you see Victoria's Secrets having thicker models or like models who have different gender expressions and, and things like that. So, you know, it's, it's those companies who aren't afraid to be bold. Yeah, I mean, first of all, I freaking love Tori also. And the, I got to say the first time that I ever saw Savage Fenty, I was like, what the hell is this? Like, this is amazing to see just like something different. So I'm really glad that you touched on those two. Oh, yeah, I saw that for the first time, like snaps and gay, like, yes, let's go. <laughs> okay, so let's take a trip back in time, right? When you were on the verge of up leveling your business, what's an action that you took to really hit that next level? Mm, I think determining that I needed to value align my business. Because as a highly sensitive person, having companies who didn't treat their employees well, having companies that perpetuated things that I don't believe in, and rationalizing that away just because, oh, it's a paycheck and I need it. And it, you know, it just makes you feel ick. And I had an aha moment when I read the book, what's it called? You were born for this by Chani Nicholas. It's an astrology book. And I'm reading the book and I realized that like in my birth chart, it's like so aligned with this. And so like that was my aha moment of like, this is my purpose. This is it. And this is what I meant to be doing. I meant to uplift the voices of people who are going to help ch change this world and the culture that we're living in. I love that. Are there any upcoming projects that you are working on right now that you can talk about that you're excited about? I am working on a YouTube channel. I have one video up at the moment. And after some technical difficulties, I should be getting another one up very soon. But yeah, my YouTube channel is The Rebel Mind. And it's just talking about all sorts sorts of rebellious mindset things, whether personal or marketing related or business related, just getting that message out there that this is where things are going and this is what needs to happen and here's how to do it. That's awesome. Where else can people find you online if they want to connect? On Instagram, it's Littlewood Copy and my website is littlewoodcopy.com. Awesome. We'll put links to all that in the show notes. Lauren, thank you so much for joining us today. It was so great to hear your perspective on rebellious marketing and all of this, it's like, I feel like this is, you know, this is what we're here to say. Yes, and thank you so much for having me. We're so glad to have you here. And thank you so much to our listeners for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave us a review. Until next time, stay sparkly.